So UML stands for Unified Modeling Language. And it is a language used to model our systems or our relationships between our classes in our program. And throughout this course, I've decided to hand draw the UML diagrams uh, as it's quicker for me and gives me more flexibility to annotate them. Uh, but you could also use a web app such as this one that I have linked here. And if I just show you this one, you can see that you can create your UML diagrams with a sort of uh, GUI. Um, but you can also hand draw them if you find that easier, such, uh, and that's the, the case for me. So first of all, I'm going to show you how you can represent a simple class using UML. So let's say that we have a dog class, a public class dog, which has one field, uh, which is just a private string with uh, of name. And we also have a method called bark, which returns void and just logs uh, a woof woof. So this can be re represented in UML as as this diagram. So at the top of the UML diagram, uh, so we just have a sort of box here and then we have three sections. And then we have the class name at the top. We have the fields listed in this next section. And then we have the methods listed in the bottom section. So if we have a look at this name field now, we can see that this is a private field. So first of all, we specify the access modifier. In this case, it's a negative sign, which means that this is a private field. Uh, the name of the field, which is name. And then we specify the return, uh, sorry, the type of the field after a colon, which in this case, it is a string. And then we have the methods. Uh, so we have one method uh, and we have a plus sign here, which means that it's a public method and it's called bark and it has a return type of void so after the colon we can just leave a blank space which means that it returns void and if you use the modeling app that I uh, referenced uh, earlier and then it would look something like this so same thing just a computer computer drawn version so we've discussed all of this um, and also I should just mention that if the access modifier is emitted, so if I've left the access modifier out, then you should just assume that fields are private and methods are public. Okay, so if I leave out the negative sign or the plus sign, you can just assume that this is a private field and you should assume that this is a, a public uh, method. Okay, so that's just a kind of convention that I've used throughout this book. Um, yeah. So now let's have a look at how we can represent inheritance relationships using UML. So inheritance relationships are represented by an arrow. So we can see here that the dog class inherits from or extends the animal class. So we have an animal class here and it is extending and dog is extending or inheriting from the animal class. Okay, so if we have a look at the uh, how this would look in code, we have a, a public class dog, and in C sharp we represent inheritance with a colon. So we can see that dog inherits or extends the animal class, and this is like um, inheritance is kind of like an is our relationship. So here we're kind of saying like a dog is an animal. Okay, so that is inheritance. Uh, composition is represented by an arrow with a filled diamond. So here's the filled diamond and here is an arrow. And composition is kind of like a has at relationship. So we're saying dog has a size. Okay, so here's the sort of computer drawn version. Um, so how is how would this look in code? So we have our dog class and then we're saying that dog is composed of a, a size class, okay? Uh, and here we have a field of size, okay? And if, you, if you're unsure on what composition is exactly uh, and you know the difference between composition and inheritance, then I will be covering that uh, shortly. Association relationships are represented by an arrow and they're kind of similar to uh, composition relationships. However, there is a difference between uh, association and composition. So association, uh, a good example for this is a person 
has a car. So a person has uh, a field for uh, owning a car, but a person is not composed of a car. A person holds a reference to a car so that it can interact with it, but a person can exist without a car. So this is an association relationship. Whereas with composition, uh, is when a child object wouldn't be able to exist without its parent object. For example, a hotel is composed of its rooms or holds reference to its rooms and a hotel bathroom cannot exist without a hotel, without the hotel class. So if you destroy the hotel, then you also destroy the hotel bathroom. It, the hotel bathroom cannot exist by itself. Otherwise, it's just a bathroom, it's not a hotel bathroom. Also, if a customer is destroyed, their shopping cart and orders are lost too. Therefore, a customer is composed of shopping cart and orders. And if orders are lost, then order details and shipping info are also lost. So orders are composed of shipping info and order details. So that is the main difference between association and composition. Association is where the uh, if you destroy, say, a person cl a class, then the car class can still exist because a person isn't composed of or sort of made up of cars. It's just that a person can own a car to, so, that, so that the person can interact with the car. Whereas composition, on the other hand, is where um, if you destroy the, the sort of class that is made up of it of these uh, other classes or composed of these other classes then these other classes are also destroyed so that's the difference between association and composition so now we're going to have a look at dependency relationship which is represented by a dashed arrow so here you can see that dog um, depend has a dependency of documents okay so what does this mean? So here we have a public class dog and we have a render method and we pass a document to this render method. So, you know, presumably this means that we are rendering the dog onto some documents and we can pass the documents uh, into this render method. So above documents is not a field in this class, okay? but it is used somewhere in the class. In this case, it's a parameter to this render method, but it could, it could also be a local variable defined in the render method. So within this render method, we could say var documents equals new documents. And then that would also mean that dog has a document dependency. So somewhere in dog class, we have a reference or dependency to the document class. Okay, and that is a dependency relationship. So essentially we have a, a parameter or a local variable in one of the methods and that is, is um, called a dependency relationship. So uh, that is all of the UML uh, that I want to discuss for this course. We, there are uh, many other relationships that we could discuss, but that is all, we, all that you need to know for uh, studying uh, design patterns.